fiery horse with the speed of light, a clot of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hi! The full moon silvered the plain as the boy and girl rode up to the spring. There they dismounted and let their horses drink. Oh, ho oh, oh, there, ho. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it was here just a month ago that we met, though, Mike. Yeah. The night you came back to the valley, Lita. And I did not want to come. It was my uncle Don Esteban and Senor Foster who insisted. They say I must live in the old hacienda if I were to win my case in the courts. Oh, how I fought them. But now I am glad I came. Because I let you, Don Mike. Yeah. It is true. Why are you so mysterious? Why will you not tell me your last name? Mike's enough. You see, you're Donna Estrelita Valdez. What difference does that make? It looks like you're going to win your case. Then the land by the river where the homesteaders live and the Circle Sea and the range, the whole valley will belong to you. But is that not right? It was granted to my grandfather by the king of Spain. There have been other grants since then. But they were not according to law. The courts have say so, and soon the government in Washington will say so, too. Uh, maybe so. And when that day comes, I'll be a cowhand out of a job. You are not my enemy because you work for McClellan Carroll. Oh, I could never be your enemy. No. And when the Circle C is mine, you will run it for me. I couldn't do that. But why not? Because I'd be working for your uncle and George Foster, not you. Oh, no, for me. And I know pretty well what they're planning to do. They're going to run all the homesteaders off the land, aren't they? I do not know. I didn't think you did. Is that wrong? It depends on how you look at it. I may not be your enemy leader, but you're going to have a lot of them. No. You have them now. How do you think those homesteaders feel? They ate me? Uh, they sure do. And that's why it's dangerous for you to ride alone at night. I don't want you to do it anymore, Lita. But it is only at night I can slip away from the hacienda. It is only at night I can meet you. This is the last time. What? I'll tell you why. I... Hey, listen. Horses. Yes. There they are, some men riding down the hill toward us. They are cowboys, no? They are cowboys, no. Who then? That looks like Frank Cook in front. Who is he? Homesteader. Get mounted. <laughs> Why do they come here? I heard some talk in town. I think they'd like to take you prisoner. What are you saying? Come on, get up. Get up. 
Where do we go? There's a line cabin about a half mile from here. Only one small window in it. If they're after you, I can hold them off until help comes. Ride, leader. Underlay. Oh, get up. The Lone Ranger and Toto reined up on the top of the ridge where they could see the band of horsemen riding after Mike and Lita. Who's the Who's the Who's the oh, Hunter, I don't like the looks of this, Toto. You know who those men are? Well, them homesteaders. Why are they chasing that man and that girl? Hunter, not know that. We'd better find out. Oh, we ride down the valley? No, we'll follow the ridge. We can keep them in sight from here. Come on, Silver. Come up, Scout. The masked man and the Indian urged their mounts on until they were racing along the top of the ridge parallel to the homesteaders. They saw Lita and Mike dismount in front of the line cabin and hurry inside. When a volley of shots rang out from the cabin, the homesteaders pulled their horses to a stop and began to return Mike's fire. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. I don't understand what's going on here, Kimasabi. Well, Padre, tell us maybe. Let us say their trouble in valley. It's half an hour's ride to the pass of the mission. We're going to stop this gunfight before we leave. Well, how do you do that? On that ledge below us, there's plenty of cover. We'll leave Silver and Scout here. Steady, big fellow. Easy, Scout. The Lone Ranger and Toto worked their way down the slope to the ledge. Then, from the cover of some rocks, they opened fire. Their shots were intentionally wide of any mark, but close enough to make the homesteaders realize their exposed position. And after a few minutes, they pulled their horses around and headed away across the plain. Inside the cabin, Mike watched them in surprise. That's mighty funny. What is Mike? They're riding away. It is because you shoot so straight and so fast. Oh, I wasn't even coming close. I didn't mean to as long as they kept their distance. Perhaps they've made a mistake. Perhaps they thought we were someone else. They probably didn't know who I was. But you're the only girl in the valley who wears a fancy getup like that to ride a horse. They knew who you were, all right. Maybe they heard somebody coming. Who? Well, your uncle's men. Oh, no. Or some of it, some of the boys from the range. I do not hear anybody. Neither do I. But I guess you're willing to admit now that it isn't safe for you to ride alone at night. I will not give up seeing you. No? Well, I was just about to tell you something when they started after us. Nothing you say will make any difference. I'm going to let your uncle tell you. I'm going to take you home, and he'll tell you as soon as he sees me. But you cannot come to the Hacienda. You're not riding home alone. Esteban will shoot you if he sees you with me. I'll match my draw with his. Come on. Mike. Mike, you say you are nothing but a cowpuncher. I say you are a gentleman. That is why I call you Don Mike. But my uncle, he will not think as I do. I don't expect him to, Lita. What's going to happen won't be pleasant for either of us. But it's something we both have to face. Come on. From high on the ledge, the Lone Ranger and Tonto watch the girl and the boy ride away. They're heading south. What's in that direction, Tonto? Well, that's where old house stands. The Valdez Hacienda. Ah. Does the Valdez family have come back to the valley? Maybe so. If they have, there's sure to be trouble. A long time since we've been in New Mexico. Maybe Padre tell us what happened. Yes, and the sooner the better. We're heading straight for the mission. As Mike and Lita neared the Valdez Hacienda, they could see the light of many torches in the outer courtyard. They could hear the voices of Don Esteban's men as they saddled their horses. They have found out. They have discovered I'm not in my room. Oh, please, Don Mike, do not come any farther. I'm coming into the courtyard with you. But it is more than my uncle we must fear. Everyone is awake. Senor Foster will be there. Are you afraid of him? I am afraid of no one. I do not like him. Neither do I. You know him? We've met. Where? You'll find that out, too. Here we are. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, Farida. Where have you been? I went for a ride. Uh, who is this man with you? He is a cowboy who has saved my life. He is a good friend of mine, and I wish you to make him welcome. Oh, he has saved your life? There was a band of men. Mike says they were homesteaders, and they rode after me. How many times have I warned you that you must never leave the hacienda alone? Esteban, 
Don't you see who this man is? I'd hmm? advise you not to go for your gun, Foster. No, Mikey's my friend. Your friend? That's a good one. It is Carroll. Of course it is. McClellan Carroll. What? what? Your friend, Lita. The man who's been fighting us through a dozen courts. The man who's been trying to cheat you out of your legitimate inheritance. Is this true? You told me your name was Mike. That's what most people call me. You lied to me. No, I just didn't tell you the whole truth. I knew what a difference it'd make. Where did you meet this man? That does not matter now. I figured it wouldn't. But try to believe this, Lita. I'm not your enemy, and I don't want to see you hurt. You won't get a chance to hurt. She don't have to worry about me. I still have my cattle, and I can find another range. That isn't true for the homesteaders. They have nothing but their farms, and if you try to drive them off, they'll fight. I don't blame them for that. I don't blame them for anything they try to do to you, Foster, or to you, Don Esteban. Well, the insolence. But I don't want anything to happen to Lita. See that nothing does. Get around there, boy. Get up. Mike, Mike, wait. Good riddance. You have been a little fool, Lita. Oh, do not talk to me. Pepito, Pepito, take my horse. Si, senorita. Venga, cabana. No, you will listen to me. I will not listen to you. I despise you both. Now, what do you think, Don Esteban? Think? I told you she was getting hard to handle. I will teach her. I will lock her up. You can't always keep her locked up. And she's of age, you know. You'd better change your mind and let me marry her. You would like to be master of the valley, wouldn't you? You'd have your share. I don't trust you. But why not? You know as much about me as I know about you. Wouldn't you rather have me married to Lita than someone like Mike Carroll? No, uh, that could never be. Or someone like him? Someone who wouldn't be friendly? Think it over, Don Esteban. And don't think too long. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger had reached the mission on the other side of the pass. And the Padre was telling him why he had been sent for. It is all over now, the lawsuits. Soon there will come word from Washington that the Valdez title has been approved. Then Mike Carroll must leave the Circle C. It is not too bad for him. He is young, he has many cattle and much money. It is the others I think of. The homesteaders. See, they have nothing but their farms. They've worked so hard. Isn't there a chance the Valdez girl will let them stay on? She is ruled by her uncle, and he is a man without a heart. That is also true of the one called Foster, their lawyer. He is greedy, too. He and Don Esteban think of nothing but money. And the law is on their side. It will be. So I have asked you to come here, my friend, because I am afraid the farmers will try to defy the law. Have you talked with them? I have done my best. It is not enough. That must have been the Valdez girl we saw tonight. What do you say? In the valley. We saw a girl and a man. There was a band of homesteaders after them. Heaven forgive them. We helped drive them off. There was no harm done tonight. Well, the, the girl is innocent of any wrong. They must be made to realize that at once. But she's the one who owns the valley. If they resort to violence already, what will they do when the final word comes from Washington? Oh, when will that be? Any day now. Oh, oh. Huh. Who can it be so late? I must go and see. Well, perhaps I'd better leave. No, it is all right for you to stay here. I will close the door almost all the way. No one will see you. Yes, I'm coming. Yes. I am Pepito from the Hacienda Valdez, Padre. See, si, my son. I bring the compliments of Don Esteban. He asks that you come to the Hacienda tomorrow and perform the marriage between the Dona Estelita and the Senor Foster. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. When Pepito had delivered Don Esteban's message and started back for the valley, the Padre returned to the office where the Lone Ranger was waiting. You heard what he said? Yes, Padre. You seem to be surprised. I am astonished. Senor Foster is not the man for Estralita. He's old. He's hard. He's wise in the ways of the world. She is a little flower. She is what her name says, a little star. Will you go to the hacienda? See, si, it is my duty. But I will go to talk with her. I will make sure it is her wish to marry the Senor Foster. You believe her uncle is forcing her into it? He will not be allowed to do such a thing. Huh. Again, someone comes. Can Pepito have forgotten something? See, I am coming. Senor Mike. Good evening, Padre. Come in. Uh, didn't I see one of Don Esteban's men riding away from here? It is possible. Pepito brought me a message. Do you have any influence with the Don? Very little. Well, it's about us to lead off come. So? The homesteaders are fighting mad. I'm afraid they'll take it out on the girl. Can't you persuade Don Esteban that she should stay here for a while? Well, I, I can try to persuade him. But it interests me. Why are you so concerned about her welfare? It is because of her that you are losing your ranch. I never try to pretend with you, Padre. I'm in love with her. Oh? But she is not in love with you. I think she is. And maybe sometime when all this is settled... You hope to marry her? Yes, I do. Have you not heard that she is to marry with Senor Foster tomorrow? But Foster? I don't believe it. Mike, I want you to meet a friend of mine. A good friend. Come this way. Why, sure, but you must be mistaken about Lita and Foster. No, Mike. No. My friend, this is Mike Carroll, the owner of the Circle C Ranch. He's masked. He isn't an outlaw, Mike. Why should anyone wear a mask who isn't an outlaw? Those are silver bullets in his belt. His horse is silver, too. You may have seen an Indian outside. His name is Tonto. You mean Hello, this Mike. is... Oh, mister, I'm sure glad to meet you. He has heard what you have told me, Mike. Now I would like to hear what he advises that you do. Well, that's very simple. Simple? If Lita's going to marry Foster tomorrow? Why don't you marry her tonight? What? I can't. Why not? The Padre will perform the ceremony. But I don't know whether she'll have me or not. Uh, have you asked her? No. <laughs> well, that's the first step, of course. If I go near the hacienda, they'll shoot me on sight. If they see you. The largest bedroom in the hacienda is on the second floor. It opens onto a balcony that overlooks the garden. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. Don't rush me. We could stop at your ranch first and pick up some of your men. Then you'd have a bodyguard. I'm not afraid. Even so, it's a good idea. It might come in handy. I wonder if she would. <laughs> well, uh, she's the only one who can answer that question. All right. I'll ask her. Good boy. I'll get my whole crew. Do you mind if Todd and I come along? Not at all. Better get going right away, though. The sooner the better. I'll be seeing you, Padre. That is, I hope I'll be seeing you. The first stop that the Lone Ranger, Mike, and Tonto made in the valley was at the Circle C Ranch. A few minutes later, all Mike's cowhands were in the saddle and riding with them toward the hacienda. But the masked man called a halt in a small grove about a half a mile from the place. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Your men had better wait here, Mike. Tonto and I will go on with you to the garden wall. We can keep you covered and watch your horse and the one you've brought for Lita. All right. Pass the word along, Tex. Everybody's to wait right here. We got you, all right? Let's go. Come on, Silver. Come on, get out. The garden wall was only five feet tall, and Mike was able to slip from his saddle to the top of it. Easy, boy. There. The coast seems to be clear. We keep good watch. There's the balcony. Good luck. Thanks. Lita. Lita. Who is there? It's Mike. Oh, Mike. You should not have come here. But I'm glad you did. You mean that? See, si. I was angry tonight because I thought you had tried to fool me. Now I want to tell you how sorry I am. Forgive me, please. Sure, I'll forgive you. Oh, good. Now you go before anyone sees you. I want you to come with me. You are crazy. I want you to marry me. All right, some other time. 
You go away now. But you're supposed to marry Foster tomorrow. You're crazy. The Padre's supposed to come here. Your uncle's made all the arrangements. Oh, I mean it. It's the truth. He cannot make me do such a thing. He can't if you're my wife. You stay where you are. I will be right down. Mike waited anxiously. The light in Lita's room was the only one at the rear of the house. There was no sound. Then suddenly, Lita reappeared. Mike! Mike, I cannot get out of my room. They have locked the door. How can I get down from here? I'll find a way. <laughs> Mister. What is it, Mike? She said yes, but she's locked in her room. I have to find some way to get her down from the balcony. My lariat. Well, there's an easier way if you let Silver help. Silver? How? I'll show you. Just stand out of the way. All right, boy. The Lone Ranger guided the great white stallion back a few feet and reined him toward the wall. Come on, Silver. Straight at the barrier he flew, and then, with effortless ease, he now. skimmed over it. The Lone Ranger drew rein, oh, oh, directly easy. below the balcony, and stood up on Silver's back. Steady, boy. Easy. Now, senorita, you just step over the rail, I'll lift you down. You're mad. Never mind that, Lita. He's the best friend we have. Oh, all right. Uh, Let go of the rail. I've got you. But if your horse moves... He won't. All right. There you are. Gently, the Lone Ranger lowered the girl to Silver's back. A few minutes later, she was over the garden wall and mounted on the horse Mike had brought for her. Mike swung into his saddle, and once more, Silver sailed over the wall. Then the little party raced for the woods. But oh, Silver, yeah. let's come. Two hours later, the first rays of the rising sun were gilding the mission. And inside the little chapel, the padre had spoken the last words of the marriage ceremony. May God bless you always, my children. Hey, 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 What's the matter, Toto? Me not know. Rider come this way plenty fast. Horse plenty tired. Oh, only one rider? That right. You look. Do you recognize him, Padre? It's John Miller, one of the homesteaders. Miller. Please, I do hope nothing will spoil my wedding day. John promised that he would warn me. Oh, oh. Padre, it's happened. What, John? The words come from Washington by telegraph. The valley belongs to Senorita Valdez. Is that all? No. It's the way you were afraid it would be. Frank's getting all the men together. They'll be starting for the Hacienda any time now. Once more, I ask for your help, my friend. Is there no way to stop them? That depends on Mike and his men. And Mrs. Carroll. Oh, Mrs. Carroll. It is a beautiful name. And since you are the first to call me by it, I can refuse you nothing. We're with you, mass man. All of us. Oh, All right, then, listen. It was still early morning when the homesteaders swept into the courtyard of the hacienda. Don Esteban's men were taken by surprise and were unable to put up any effective resistance. Frank Cook, the leader of the farmers, put them under guard and with his chief lieutenants forced his way into the main building. Don Esteban and George Foster were waiting in the hall. What is the meaning of this outrage? It's no outrage. We're just honest men who are standing up for our rights. Is it your right to break into another man's home? As much as it's your right to steal ours. The courts have made their decision. We're appealing it. You've tried that already. Not with lawyers this time with six guns. Don Esteban and I have nothing to do with your troubles. The valley doesn't belong to us. That is true. Listen, I have a paper here. It gives us back our land. The land, it wouldn't be worth anything without the work we put into it. We're not going to leave here until Senorita Valdez signs this paper. She will not sign it. Let me read it. There's no need for you to read it. And she will sign it. Where is she? She will not. Answer me or I'll shoot. No. She's in her room upstairs. Go and get it, Joe. Right. I protest. Forget it. Let them have their way. I'll get her, Frank. Mm, see, you leave this key. Her door is locked. Take it, Joe. Yep. Got it. As the men waited for Lita's appearance, Foster found an opportunity to whisper to Don Esteban. Let her sign the paper. Get them out of here. We'll send them all to jail. Frank, she isn't up there. What? She isn't anywhere upstairs. That is not true. She's in the room with the locked door. That room was empty. So are all the others. You're hiding us somewhere. I swear I am not. We won't stand for any more of your tricks. I certainly will not. The farmers moved toward Don Esteban and Foster. At that moment, there was a volley of shots in the courtyard, and the Lone Ranger and half a dozen cowhands charged through the open door. Let any of you turn around. Let any of you make a move or we'll shoot. Why, you won't. Never mind the talk, either. Up your gun. Pick them up, Tex. Yeah, I'll get them. How's it going out there? Everything's under control. Senor, I don't know who you are, masked man, but you, you saved my life, and I'm grateful. I'm not sure I am. Those cowhands with them are from the Circle C. Yeah, they are. Why are you siding with these polecats against us? We're not. If we save their lives, 
We've saved you from jail. I wasn't talking to you, masked man. I don't know who you are. It will not be long before you find out. Esther, Did you bring these men here? See. Si. Oh, then it is all right. I wish to ask you a question, Senor Cook. Me? See si, you. You are Frank Cook, are you not? The leader of the homesteaders? Yes, right. Why have you come here? We wanted to save our homes. We wanted to make you sign a paper giving them back to us. May I see it? Why, here. Yeah. But I do not understand this. I must have some advice. Tear it up. You don't have to sign anything now. It is not your advice I wish, Don Esteban, or your Senor Foster. A wife should always turn to her husband. What? Your husband? May I introduce him to you? Here. Here is Don Mike. Yes, sir. Hey. Shall I sign this paper? Well, that's up to you. Thank you. You see, he gives me permission. Senor Cook, I will sign it. You don't know what you are saying. Oh, yes, Don Esteban, I do. You, you mean it, ma'am? I will show you. Hey. The Circle C is large enough for Don Mike and myself. Don't sign that. And it is only right that you should keep your farm. You have worked and you have earned them. Here. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for all of us. No, no, do not thank me. Where is the masked man? He's gone, Lita. He's too bad. Senor Cook, we will live in peace here in the valley after my uncle and Senor Foster go away. But the thanks for that, for your future happiness and for mine, it belongs to him. To... to the masked man? See, si, to the friend of peace, to our good friend, the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.